Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old pass of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious word of sovereign grace. Here's this week's message. A number of times, and I ask uh, uh, 
I don't know why I did that, but uh, nevertheless I did. And I found it on the tape. Uh, I repeated uh, twice Psalm 27, and I was looking at Psalm 127. But I believe this is Exodus 4. that I want to read to you from this morning. I begin with the 10th verse of Exodus 4. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger, was, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Now, there is a likeness in Moses and the Lord Jesus Christ in in a number of ways. One of the ways Moses was going to speak what God gave him to speak. He was going to communicate that. By Moses you have the five first five books of the scripture. Now Jesus declared my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me and everything that the Father would have him to speak Jesus spoke. And uh, it was uh, his speaking will never man spake as he spoke. But Moses confessed that he wasn't eloquent, he wasn't able, uh, and he failed to realize if God sent him and God told him to go, that the same, the, the authority that gave him the authority to go that same authority and that same power would give him the ability uh, as to what he should say when he arrived. Now, Moses came forth before the people with uh, a number of signs. He had, he certainly had some, some credentials. Uh, he uh, had a rod in his hand and uh, there was power uh, from God in that rod. We know that uh, when that rod was moved, that the sea, uh, the sea separated, the Red Sea was separated and the children of Israel went across on dry land. We know that with, this, with the striking of that rod in the, in the wilderness upon the rock, uh, the water came out of the rock and watered the, uh, their cattle. And uh, he could put that rod down and it would become a serpent then he could take that rod up and it would be a rod in his hand. He went before Egypt with signs and with wonders of, uh, and uh, a number of miracles. The seventh plague, the ten plagues that came upon them uh, was the use of the rod upon them. So uh, Moses was able to perform uh, miracles. And when we uh, look at our Lord and Master when he came into this world, he had power, uh, he had all power. He showed by uh, his power uh, that uh, whatever 
uh, was wrong with man, he was able uh, to cure that. If, uh, if a man was maimed, or that is, if he was without a limb, or if he was wounded, and, uh, or if he was crippled, uh, he could speak to that man and he would be whole. He had that power. He had, uh, or if a man was blind, he could just speak and that man could see, or he could devise the means whereby that man uh, could see, or he could hear, or that he, well, if he was dumb, he could make him to speak. To be dumb uh, is the inability uh, to speak, and those uh, that uh, were unable to speak words, uh, or if they had a stammering tongue, uh, or if uh, they, if there uh, was an impediment in their speaking, he could, uh, he could remove that. He had that power uh, to do so. Now, uh, just think about how wonderful it is to communicate in words, to speak words, to utter languages uh, with the tongue, uh, to communicate one with another uh, as we speak. And you need to know, uh, you know, we, as we came into the world, we came into the world unable to speak. We had to be taught. To, uh, now, uh, it seems that infants don't have to be taught to cry. Uh, it seems with one spat uh, they can begin to cry, but so far uh, as speaking words, uttering words, they, uh, that they have to learn uh, these things. I, I call to mind, uh, in conversation with a man in his experience, and uh, he, uh, he assured me that in young in life, he was very wicked in his conversation and didn't think about God, uh, didn't seek God, didn't care anything about God. But uh, when, uh, when a little son, uh, the first words uh, that he heard his little son utter uh, were curse words, uh, he became under great and terrible conviction uh, for uh, the things that this little child had learned uh, from his own lips. Uh, and from that time, uh, he, uh, his conversation and his way and manner of speech uh, was, uh, uh, was in praise to God rather uh, than in uh, using his mouth uh, to blaspheme or to curse or take the name of God uh, in vain. Uh, so uh, we, we know that what we learn, uh, that uh, the words uh, that we are able to speak, uh, someone had to teach us, father and mother, uh, and uh, or uh, wherever we attended the public school or whatever we have learned it through personal study, uh, we had to be taught it to uh, someone else. And uh, how what a blessing that is uh, that we have had teachers that cared, uh, uh, that were indeed interested uh, in us to teach us uh, the things uh, that uh, we should, some of the things that we should know and that we should cherish. Now Moses uh, had uh, a teacher. Uh, Moses had a wonderful teacher, uh, and as Moses had a wonderful teacher, uh, we have a, a wonderful teacher through Moses. Uh, and um, uh, then uh, to think about being taught to, uh, by the prophets, God uh, in times past spoke, spoke by the prophets. He spoke by Moses. He spoke by Samuel uh, to the people. He spoke uh, uh, by Elisha and Elijah and other Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Uh, he spoke to the people through them, uh, and uh, that was wonderful communication because it was the word uh, that God would have his people to understand, and they understood that, uh, that that was spoken uh, to them. Uh, many of them were disobedient uh, to it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, they had the, the prophets. Uh, but uh, when we think about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, God who at sundry times and divers manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Uh, so we have the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke on this earth. Uh, he communicated. Uh, he condescended to, to come. He ate and drank with publicans and sinners. Uh, he healed the sick. Uh, he opened uh, the uh, dumb uh, mouth uh, that it could not only speak but sing praises uh, to the Lord. Uh, so uh, to be able uh, to understand uh, God's Word
work, to be able to speak, uh, how wonderful that is. Now, we, we are not able, you and I are not able, uh, certainly not able to address uh, God the Father. We can't speak uh, to Him uh, only uh, through a, the mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. If, uh, if I uh, was, if, if I as a criminal came before the court uh, in the land and I stood before uh, a, a judge in a court, uh, if, uh, if I stood there uh, as accused of a crime, I would have to have someone to speak for me. I could not speak to, uh, for myself. Uh, a mediator between me uh, and the court would have to speak uh, as uh, our we, we see the need of a mediator. We could not uh, plead uh, our, own, our own case, have the ability to do so. But I realize that there are times that someone, uh, that some uh, have asked to plead their own case and have given, been given uh, that privilege. But usually uh, that doesn't work out uh, so well. We need a mediator. We need one to stand between us. Uh, we might feel that if we could stand before God, uh, we uh, could plead our own case. But if we stood before God, the Father, uh, our mouths would be stopped and we would be guilty uh, before God uh, and not able to plead uh, our own case because uh, the whole world uh, is guilty. Every mouth is stopped and the whole world guilty uh, before God. But we have one that pleads our case and pleads for us and speaks for us. And that uh, is the reason that Jesus Christ uh, came in the world uh, to uh, plead our case. I want to, I want to look in, in Proverbs, the 31st chapter of Proverbs, The mother of Solomon spoke to him and gave him some good advice. And in the eighth verse of Proverbs 31, open thy mouth for the dumb. In the cause of all, in the cause of all as such as are appointed to destruction, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Look at the verses again. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Now, uh, if uh, we, need a, we need leaders in our land, uh, that uh, this uh, would be uppermost in their mind. Uh, they would have the cause of individuals that didn't have the capability, the understanding uh, to uh, speak for themselves or to know the things that was best for them. But the wise king, if he would be wise, if he would open his mouth for the dumb and the cause of all as such are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Solomon did, uh, did this uh, quite well, but not nearly so well uh, as the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that was able to perfectly stand before the poor and needy, uh, to uh, stand for those that were helpless, uh, to judge uh, those uh, that uh, were helpless within themselves. And when we realize that we were without strength, uh, and in due time Christ died for the ungodly, that he spoke for, for us, that he pleaded uh, our case. Uh, what wonderful words uh, those are. Now, uh, we, we read uh, in the language uh, of, uh, of Proverbs again, in the 25th chapter and the 11th verse, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver, as an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Uh, and uh, the words of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, uh, the precious words uh, that he spoke, uh, 
uh, when uh, he says to the dead, uh, live, uh, when he says to the dumb, speak, when he says uh, to the blind, uh, you can see, or to the deaf, uh, hear, uh, to those that are main, uh, make them whole, and he speaks uh, when, he br when he brings words of comfort, words of instruction, words of that are suited to our case. Uh, how wonderful are those words. Now, you and I uh, can speak a word in season uh, to uh, those that are in need. Uh, we can speak, it might be a word of encouragement. It might be a word uh, of accommodation. It might be, uh, be uh, a word of uh, a saying a job is well done, uh, we, might, uh, we might comment uh, on a job well done to a person, uh, and uh, in time of sorrow, we might bring uh, to them uh, a word of comfort and a word of instruction, uh, oh, a wor word uh, spoken uh, in season uh, to the lonely, uh, to the downcast, to the downtrodden, uh, and how precious are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, that words fitly spoken, uh, never man spake as he spake. How true and how glorious and how wonderful is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the 23rd verse of the 15th chapter of Proverbs, a man hath joy by the edge of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. To those that Jesus spoke the words, your sins are forgiven. To those that he spoke the words, your faith has made you whole. How, how suited were those words. Words spoken in power. Words spoken in love. Words spoken in care. Uh, how wonderful those words are. Now, we that, uh, that are born of the Spirit of the living God, and we that have life within us, have spiritual life within us, we're able... Uh, by uh, we're we're able to understand and receive spiritual things, and I want to turn now to the tenth chapter of the Gospel of Romans, and I want to read some there in the beginning. I believe with the tenth verse of the tenth chapter of Romans, very uh, quite familiar passage, and. I'll begin with the ninth verse of Romans 10. Now, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I read these, these verses to show that if the mouth speaks right, First, the heart has got to first be made right. With, or with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If the heart was not right, uh, then uh, we would be, uh, we would not have the ability to speak right. But uh, at the, if if the heart is made up. Uh, made right, or if the Spirit of the living God uh, is in our life, uh, and we confess with our mouth of uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, and uh, we believe uh, in Him, believe in thy heart, thou shalt uh, be saved, uh, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, or with, the, with uh, thee heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In, uh, in making that confession, and in expressing those things uh, that are acceptable in the sight of Almighty God, 
many individuals believe uh, that before an individual can uh, enter into heaven and immortal glory, uh, these statements must be made publicly. Uh, to me, these things are an evidence uh, of salvation and of a gracious state uh, and evidence of the spirit of the living God. If the new birth was, wasn't there, uh, and they made the statements, the statements would be false. I believe the statements have been made uh, when the heart wasn't prepared and when they were not right, and confession uh, has been made by the mouth, but the heart, uh, well, it did not come from the heart. Uh, it was through, uh, through teaching of men that the statement uh, was made, but the heart uh, was not uh, right. Now, uh, we read in God's Word uh, that, uh, that by our words uh, we shall be justified, and by our words uh, we uh, shall be condemned. I turn uh, to uh, Matthew, the 12th chapter, uh, and the 37th verse, uh, where Jesus said, uh, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now, how are we going to have a good word? How are we going uh, to know a good word? First, uh, the heart has to be made right. Then we have to be taught uh, by God's word. We have to be taught by His holy scriptures and by the glorious gospel uh, before uh, that uh, we could speak right. Now, uh, He says in the 35th verse, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Uh, without the Spirit of the living God, uh, we could only bring forth that which is evil. We would not have the capability of doing good or thinking good, uh, but uh, with the Spirit of the living God, uh, we uh, would be able to be taught spiritually and to speak uh, in a way uh, that would be uh, acceptable in the sight of God. I think many people uh, are confused uh, in uh, this area uh, because uh, they, they believe uh, that when one is born again and when uh, the Spirit of the living God comes into their life, they get, they get rid of their old nature, uh, uh, and uh, that is not so. We still have the old nature that we have, and it is still capable uh, of us of prompting us to speak the wrong thing, to do the wrong thing, and act uh, in the wrong way. Uh, we do not get rid of our old nature, uh, but uh, through uh, the Spirit of the living God, we are able to bring uh, the body uh, under subjection and to control uh, it uh, to some extent. Uh, so uh, when, uh, we, uh, when we read these words uh, that Jesus said, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Which of us would like to stand uh, before uh, the judgment seat of God, uh, and uh, we would be justified, and our justification would be uh, predicated and founded upon our own words? What we have said and what to, uh, we will say uh, in the future and we would stand before God uh, and uh, our, ju our eternal justification would stand upon that. Uh, even the man Job, uh, when he came before the Lord, uh, he was not able to speak, uh, but he said, Behold, uh, I'm vile, but I'll lay my hand upon my mouth. And he had uh, no answers uh, for God, but though he could not plead his own case, uh, but uh, through the mediation of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and through the finished work of Jesus Christ, uh, his case uh, could be pleaded. Your case can be pleaded before the throne of justice uh, through uh, the mediation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he speaks for us, uh, then uh, we are going to be uh, justified. Uh, but uh, to uh, us uh, here in the world, notice the words, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, 
They shall give an account thereof in the day uh, of judgment. Every idle word. For by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy words uh, thou shalt be condemned. Uh, this uh, indeed uh, places a great responsibility upon uh, the child of God uh, when we realize uh, that uh, that sin uh, in word, uh, certainly uh, we sin in word uh, and in deed. Uh, and uh, when we sin in word, that's because that, that comes uh, from uh, the heart. Uh, so, but the, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is uh, the only one by His power that can cleanse us and wash us uh, from uh, this uh, condition. We as the children of God are, are accountable to our God uh, for what? For the things uh, that we say. Uh, and uh, in this language, uh, as, it, as it comes before us, uh, for by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy words uh, thou, thou shalt be condemned. Uh, this is the necessity of confessing the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as our advocate, uh, our priest, uh, and our king, uh, and uh, that uh, we make the confession uh, as uh, Job did, as Isaiah did. Behold, uh, I'm vile, I'm a man of unclean lips, uh, and need the cleansing power uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we would not dare uh, come before the Lord uh, pleading uh, how good we were or how good uh, all of the good that we uh, had done, uh, but we would come before the Lord pleading uh, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and pleading of uh, the one that gave uh, him set for us to redeem us from all iniquity, all that all that we could say or all that we could do would not take away uh, our sins, would not remove uh, our guilt, uh, but the child of God, uh, they are indeed commanded uh, to, uh, to learn to live and to learn to speak as the Lord would have them to speak, uh, to speak those things uh, that are pleasing in the sight of God. I, I didn't... Uh, I didn't think that I would uh, get into this part of the subject matter, but I want to I want to go to the book of James, and I want to read there in the some in the the last part of the book of James, the last two verses of James chapter one. The last two verses of James chapter 1. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. See, I, I, I have a great responsibility. You have a great responsibility as a child of God and as a child of grace. Uh, over in Matthew, he speaks of idle words and our giving account of idle words. And by our words, uh, we shall be justified. And by our words, uh, we shall be condemned. If I say that I am righteous uh, when uh, I'm a poor sinner, uh, then uh, I can't be justified uh, on uh, that premise. I will be condemned on it. But if I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, then uh, I can see justification uh, for He went down for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. But the way uh, that our religion is going to be measured, uh, much of it is going to be measured by the way uh, that we use uh, our tongue and the way that we speak of God and the way that we speak of others. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridled not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion uh, is vain. I, I believe that the scriptures teach and uh, this is your, probably your own experience. It's my experience of, of that, uh, that, that though as I have tried to teach you what a blessing it is to speak, but how hard it is uh, not to ever say the wrong thing, not to ever say a hurtful thing.
thing uh, uh, not to ever sin uh, uh, with the tongue. Uh, uh, that is most difficult, uh, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he requires uh, uh, that we bridle uh, uh, our tongue. Uh, and what does it mean uh, to bridle uh, the tongue? Uh, uh, and uh, as, as, I, as I look at that and think about it, uh, I'll, I, uh, uh, when I was young, uh, I had the, the nicest little saddle horse uh, and a very spirited animal, uh, but I wouldn't dare get on that horse uh, without a bridle, uh, without uh, something to control of uh, that horse. Uh, but uh, with the, uh, with the uh, tugging on the rein, with the bit in his in the mouth and the bridle uh, on the head, uh, and uh, just with the touch of the rein on the neck, uh, the horse would turn uh, wherever uh, I desired uh, it to go. Uh, if I let out the rein, uh, it would uh, hit a dead run immediately to pull back. Uh, it would stop. It was controlled uh, by the, the bridle, and this, this was uh, an external one. Uh, Bridle on the outside to, to control the animal, uh, and uh, we uh, we read here uh, that we have to uh, control. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, uh, this man's religion is vain. Uh, and uh, then he says, pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this: to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted. But, uh, from the world uh, here uh, is great work uh, uh, for the child of God. Here is important work uh, uh, for the child of God. Uh, here uh, is uh, work that is difficult uh, uh, for us. Uh, we uh, that uh, are born of the spirit of the living God uh, can sing praise to God, can speak praises to His name, and uh, we, uh, we at the same time uh, can use uh, our tongues uh, to, uh, in dishonor to God, in dishonor to others. Uh, I think about the Apostle Peter uh, and those words that he said uh, when he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then uh, under pressure and under fear uh, said, I don't know the man, I don't know Jesus, and cursed. Uh, and uh, swore and said that he did not know him. Uh, so uh, you see uh, that he had, he still had, still had his own nature. He was capable of believing and did praise God. Uh, but uh, uh, under pressure, uh, he turned with his words and said, I know not the man, I don't know him. Uh, and he denied him uh, this cause of great weeping. Uh, perhaps uh, our tongues have caused us great sorrow. Uh, many of the things that I've said have caused me great sorrow. I'm sure many of the things that you have said uh, have caused you great sorrow. Uh, and uh, we this brings uh, to our hearts and minds the necessity of control. Uh, and uh, it isn't as some people would have you uh, if uh, you have, have been baptized and you've taken up your cross and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the battle is all over and everything will be fine. Uh, we have to try to control uh, our bodies so long as we live uh, in the world. Uh, our tongues uh, is the most difficult to, uh, to uh, control. Uh, as, we, as we think about the, the ability to sing praise to God, the, the ability to speak in His name, uh, to read His Word, and to communicate knowledge uh, to uh, others uh, respecting the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. But there are times that this old nature of ours uh, gets out of control, uh, and the tongue is the first uh, to uh, get out of control. Look at the third chapter of James, and and, uh, and we'll read there. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend, but if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and is able uh, also to bridle the whole body 
if uh, if we can bridle the tongue, if we can control it, uh, and uh, as I understand it, uh, God uh, isn't going to do that. Uh, we're going to have to do it uh, ourselves by His help and by His instruction. Uh, we, we ourselves are responsible for what uh, we say. We're responsible for what we think. Uh, and uh, God uh, is the judge. Uh, I, 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 want to, I want to turn uh, to the Psalms in the 39th chapter of the Psalms. And I'll bring this thought to you from, from that Psalm of David. beginning of the chapter. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked are before me. Now, you may know already who was able to do this. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. This was David's desire, but he wasn't able to do it perfectly. Uh, though, uh, I think that he did it quite well. But I point you to one that was able to do this perfectly, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked are before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even uh, for, from good, and my heart was stared. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burn. Then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. I want to, uh, you uh, to see, uh, I want you to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. He was brought before his sheriffs uh, as dumb. He opened not his mouth uh, with their accusations. He said, I will take heed to of my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked are before me. Everyone that was before him, he could have condemned of them all, and he uh, could have shown their sins uh, and revealed their sins and condemned of them. But instead, uh, he held uh, his, thumb, his tongue uh, while the wicked were before him. Uh, it is good for us uh, when we're being condemned by others that we hold our tongue. Uh, if we do not, we're out, out to lash out to, uh, at them. But he said, I was dumb with silence. I held my peace when uh, from good, even from good, and my soul was stared uh, within me. Uh, oh, uh, I could not begin to tell you uh, what uh, what he felt uh, as the wrath of God was against him, uh, and uh, and all of my sins, and all of your sins, and all of the sins of the elect was laid upon him, and uh, there there were those that were spitting upon him. He uh, had had the scourge on his back. He had had the crown of thorns on his head. He had been nailed to uh, the cruel tree, and there uh, he was. Uh, oh, but. There were the words that came out of his mouth uh, were words of love. Uh, the words that proceeded out of his mouth in that condition was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, he kept his tongue uh, with a bridle, if you please. Uh, there was not sin in his tongue. There was no bile in his mouth. None of us can say that. Uh, but he could, uh, and it was true. Uh, and one day, uh, our uh, mouths and our tongues uh, will speak perfectly. Uh, I know that he has provided with, um, he has provided his word, and he has given us instruction uh, how that we control uh, ourselves and our tongue. Uh, think about it. Uh, think about your life. Uh, I, as I think about my life, uh, what it what would it have been without any biblical instruction? I told you in the outset that uh, everything that I've learned, uh, everything that I know, I had to learn it to, uh, from someone else. Uh, what if in my bringing up uh, that uh, all, uh, I knew, all I knew uh, was that uh, which was evil, only evil uh, instructors, uh, no one uh, that was interested in good, uh, and uh, what a terrible thought. Uh, that is, uh, but we've had the Word of God, we've had the, the glorious gospel, we've had the, the precious book uh, of the Bible uh, to learn from and to be taught of His precious Word. Uh, and there, uh, the Son of the living God uh, said,
said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And those precious words that he spoke, I think of Stephen speaking in a similar way as they stoned him to death, lay not this sin to their charge. I think of the words of Jesus on the cross as he said, I thirst. As he said to the thief, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. As he said to John, behold my mother. As he said to Mary, behold thy son. The precious words that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke on the cross, the precious words that he spoke while he lived here in the world. All the words that I speak, as he quoted the words that I speak, their spirit and their life, what blessed communication there is in his words and in the things that we learn from him. And we have been able to learn a language of communication, to speak in a native tongue, and then to learn the language that God would have us to speak, and learn the things that he said to us and the things that he had done for us. Oh, where the word of the king is, there's power. There are no words like his word. There is no instruction like his instruction, the instruction of our Prince Emmanuel, the Lord Jesus Christ. He lives and rules and reigns. He's going to speak for every one of his beloved. He's going to speak for all of the bride. All of his children, he's going to speak for them. He came for them. They were given to him. He communicated life to them. He put his laws in their hearts and printed them in their mind. He was nailed to the cross for them. He died for them. He endured the wrath of God against sin for them. He went in the grave for them and he arose out of the tomb. He is now pleading our case in glory. He's the mediator. We can pray to him. And I spoke uh, as I spoke to you, I know that I can't speak to God the Father without Him, but with Jesus Christ, my mediator, and my priest, and my king, I can say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us uh, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory uh, forever. Uh, these, uh, through the mediation of Christ, uh, because you've been made heirs by His grace and by His greatness, uh, our songs, uh, though uh, we lack much, we lack uh, perfection in song, uh, we lack perfection in speaking or praise, but yet through Jesus Christ, uh, we have acceptance uh, through Him. Uh, may uh, we keep watch on our words, for words are wonderful things. They can, they can be like a ray of sunshine and brighten a lonely life, or they can cut in time of anger like an open two-edged knife. Keep them back. Oh, uh, words of, of comfort, words of love, words of benefit, words of praise. These are important words. These are precious words. There are, we have so many precious words in our hymn book. We have so many precious words uh, in God's book and the love that is expressed by others. Uh, in speaking one to another, uh, if it could always be in love. Love, in love, what a wonderful place we would have uh, to live in.
speaking to ourselves in the love of God and in His great grace, that our words be, would be with grace, seasoned with salt, that we know how to answer every man. There is so much cleansing that needs to be done in our lives as we as we work on uh, at, and if we could control the member of the tongue, if we could get that under subjection uh, according to God's word, the other things that are wrong with us, uh, uh, this uh, would this would uh, would not be as difficult uh, as controlling the tongue. Because if we could do that, we could find the whole body. Uh, and as the horse is controlled with the Bible, as the ship is controlled by one small hill, uh, then uh, this could, our words and our speech would be better. But unless the tree is made good, certainly there will be no control of the tongue or of other members of the body. But if the tree is made good, if he prepares the heart, then flowing from the heart, there can come good things and good speech and good actions, acceptable actions in his sight. Uh, do you feel, I feel the need, I feel the need of improvement in this area. Uh, and as I think about how wonderful God is, how good he wants to give us his word, how good to give his son, and the blessings of salvation that, that has come on us through Jesus Christ, and the gracious word that he gave, the positive and sure promises that have come to us, what a blessing this is to embrace his promises, to have the assurance that he loves with an everlasting love, that he is unchanging, that he has called us for the holy calling and redeemed us from our sins. One day we'll be with him in perfection. While we live here in the world, we hope to grow in grace and in knowledge of him. We hope uh, to uh, speak with our tongue uh, in a way that is acceptable. We hope to act uh, with our bodies in a way that is acceptable in his sight. May the Lord God of heaven bless you all and lead you and sustain you uh, while we sojourn here in the world. Um, never man spake as he spake the words that he spoke. Certainly, if the scripture should apply to anyone, it should apply to him. The word fitly spoken or as Apples of gold and pictures of silver. Never a man's faith as Jesus' faith. And he has the capability of speaking to all into whatever condition they're in and communicating to them. May he bless you and keep you is our prayer. We'll stand and sing. If you're here and desire you not to the church. You come while we stand. Sovereign sing. Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.